If you're interested in playing Code Wars to improve your programming skills, and you want to know if that's going to be a good use of your time, that's what I want to talk about in this video. I'm also going to give you some tips on how to rise up quickly through the Code Wars ranks. Hey, I'm Ben, and this is Learn Code by Gaming. Code Wars is a website where you can practice your programming skills and earn ranks by completing challenges. You rank up depending on how many challenges you complete and how difficult those challenges are. It has that Japanese martial arts theme, and there's some strange lingo to go along with that, but you pick it up quick enough. You play the part of a code warrior who trains on kata, which is what they call the coding challenges. By being more active on the site, you earn honor. And by completing kata rated above your current rank, you work towards that next rank. To get registered, you must first complete a simple kata in the language of your choice. If you can't complete this first step, you probably aren't ready for code wars yet, and you should spend more time learning the basics. But if you really just want to get inside, here's how you would solve the first problem in JavaScript. You just need to add the return keyword. The first problem in C++ and the Python first question have a similar solution. The PHP first problem is a little trickier because the variable dollar signs are missing. Once inside, you can do this suggested rank up challenge, which is a random kata from one rank higher than your current level. Or you can switch the focus to fundamentals to do more challenges from your current rank. The kata themselves are created by other users from the site. There's a review process for getting kata approved, but I still find the quality pretty inconsistent. I've come across spelling errors and just plain confusing instructions more than once. But there doesn't seem to be any penalty for skipping questions, so skip away until you find one you like. The general workflow is this. You'll read the instructions, write your solution, and run the sample tests. And if those pass, you can press attempt to run your solution against the official unit tests. If you pass them all, you get full credit when you lock in your answer. You aren't penalized for submitting an incorrect solution, so don't be shy about committing. To debug your code, you can use print statements even when just running the sample tests, and those will appear in the output. So use that to your advantage if you don't have a separate IDE to develop your solutions in. These coding challenges only focus on the algorithm part of development, so as long as you can pass the unit tests without timing out, you'll get full credit. Properly commented code and code readability don't count for anything. So here's what I like about Code Wars. It's free to play. The site is supported by ads, or you can spend $5 a month to get premium, which removes the ads and gives you access to faster execution time. There's a low barrier to entry, meaning there's nothing to install and no environment you need to set up to get started. The code you write runs on their servers, so all you need is your web browser. They support a lot of programming languages. You get to see other people's solutions and comment on them. And seeing other people's answers is the best part about Code Wars in my opinion. You should definitely take the time to review other people's solutions and research anything you don't understand to get the most out of this website. It's good for quick practice in small chunks, at least at the lower Caillou and it's gamified to encourage your progress. And now for what I don't like. It encourages elite code, not readability. You get no points for comments, and the promoted solutions are often so concise that it would take you just as long to unravel them as it would to write your own solution. Don't always trust the voting on what people say the best solutions are. It ignores validating input parameters, logging errors, and raising exceptions. These can be dangerous habits to get into, ones that you don't want to see carry over when you're writing production code. The discourses about each kata don't segregate by programming language, which can be confusing if you only know one language. You might not realize when someone's talking about a different programming language that looks a lot like the one that you're learning. Finally, I feel coding challenges like these narrow your focus on the wrong things. Practicing on this site doesn't really reflect or prepare you for what most programmers do all day. It doesn't teach you anything about architecting your projects, documentation, version control, utilizing other libraries. It's really just hyper-focused on algorithms. With that in mind, here's what I don't think you should use Code Wars for. Learning as a brand new programmer. The site doesn't explain any programming concepts to you at all, or any syntax. I think Code Wars would leave most beginners completely lost. Interview prep. As programmers, we can get too focused on the coding part of the interview process. The chances that you'll see the exact same question on Code Wars and in your interview are basically zero. If you're interviewing for a programming job, then you should already know how to code, so just be confident and trust your skills. Performance evaluation. I think coding challenges are a really bad way to evaluate a potential hire or a team of programmers because it really only measures one facet of what makes a good developer. I would even go so far as to be wary of candidates that overperform on these kinds of challenges because leak coders, from my experience, often lack vision of the broader picture. They may dismiss things like user experience and code maintainability as not important and they tend to gravitate towards the hardest challenge inside a project while ignoring all the rest. So unless you're looking for someone like that, and you're usually not, you could end up hiring someone who does more harm than good. So who should use Code Wars? If you're self-taught and have never taken an algorithms course, 
then it's worth spending a few days in Code Wars to get a sense for that style of thinking. Your future coworkers have likely done challenges like this before, and you want to be able to relate to that experience. If you're preparing for a coding competition, then Code Wars is good practice because it has the same sorts of questions that they usually ask at those events. If you're an experienced programmer who's switching languages, then Code Wars can be a good way to get more practice. Or if you're someone who just enjoys doing puzzles and Code Wars keeps you engaged, then it's not gonna hurt to keep doing it. If you're doing self-learning, as long as you're combining Code Wars with full projects, it can help you to log more hours writing code. So if you are gonna spend some time on Code Wars and you want to make up quickly, here's what you should do. Instead of doing the suggested kata, go over to the browse feature. Set the difficulty level to at least one better than your current rank. The Caillou countdown, so if you're just starting at level eight, you need to select level seven or lower. You need to complete 10 kata at one level better than your current rank to rank up. Or you can complete kata at multiple ranks better than your current one to rank up faster. Now I want you to sort by most completed. The ones that have been completed often are either easier than their peers, or they have a trick to them that makes them easier than they first appear. If you're doing Python, become familiar with map, filter, and reduce for easy shortcuts. Browse through the difficulty levels until you start to find kata that look like they might be too much trouble. Once you've figured out what that level is for you, step back two levels and focus on doing the most completed kata at that difficulty. That way, once you've worked up to that difficulty level, you still have some of the easier kata in the next level for you to progress on. For example, the level two Caillou looked a little difficult to me, so I've been working on the level four Caillou to rank up quickly. And once I get to level four, I still have all the easier level three Caillou to work on to progress through that level two. The purple level kata are more like mini projects, so be prepared for those to take several days apiece if you get to that level. So that's my review of Code Wars. I hope you found this useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you next time.